Welcome subscribers. Welcome new subscribers. Thank you for following, liking, and sharing our videos. My name is Reverend Penelope Horton. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and right here on YouTube. I know it's been a while since you guys seen me. I have been really, really busy. Uh, I've been working, trying to grow my metaphysical shop. If you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know I've renovated uh, our garage. Uh, I was very happy about that. Uh, that was a big milestone for me, uh, for the business, for the ancestors. It's a big milestone for us. Uh, I put in a door. I put in a heating, heating and air unit in here. Uh, I have an event. We have an event scheduled October 16th, 2021 at 12 p.m., the new Awakening Spirituals uh, Festival. Uh, for those that are newly uh, newly awakened, we're celebrating the awakening because we're waking up all over the place. We're in the Aquarius age, and people are just waking up. And I come in contact with so many people that's wanting to find some type of guidance for their journey. I'm going to be giving an explosive uh, lecture and book review about the spiritual awakening. Things that, you know, I'm going to be sharing uh, with other people that no one shared with me that will really give you a really big head start on your journey. So you don't have to make as many as mistakes as, you know, most of us make on our journey. You know, don't know where to go, don't know which thing to grab. I'm going to give it all there in that lecture uh, if you're if you wanting to come, so we would love to see you there. You can find the event on Eventbrite. I might paste uh, post a link here. Okay, uh, today I think that was everything I had going on. And Friday I'm going to be giving uh, free tarot readings. So you probably want to uh, be looking for that notification. I'm going to be scheduling that when I get off of this book review here. So let's see here. Uh, this is a book review, and I've read this book a, a little while ago. Like I said, I'm working eight hours uh, at a job, and then I come here and do my metaph metaphysical thing uh, after I leave my eight-hour job. So my husband said, gosh, you're so busy. You're just a busy woman. I was like, I know. I'm trying to grow, and I have goals, and it's things I want to do, and, you know, uh, and this is one of my biggest dreams. So it keeps me busy. The book that I want to do a review on today is Melanin Empath by Jade Asisqui. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Oh, it's on my tablet, you guys. It's the electronic book. Okay. Um, I don't know how much I pay for this. I don't think I paid over 10 bucks for this, though. Uh, it has 12 chapters, two sections. Uh, the first section talks about melanin. I wasn't so much interested in the melanin and empath as I was in the empath. And, you know, in the study of empath and learning more about myself, the dark side and light side of empath, which we're going to jump into that in just a minute, uh, especially talking about the narcissist empath, that, that is just very extraordinary to me. Uh, when I talk about the narcissist and empath, I think that's very extraordinary because I've always thought the narcissist and the empath, uh, for me, I felt like there was some type of karmic lesson there. Another thing, what I realized about um, empaths, and most empaths are codependents. Most of them, uh, if you look at psychologically uh, and behaviorally, start looking at the empath, the empath is an enabler and a codependent. OK, a easy follow the, the crowd type person if it's not careful. OK, um, they tend to not know what they really want because they're uh, so absorbed into other people, satisfying other people. So if you, you're not sure if you're an empath, if you don't fit in any of these categories, ask yourself, are you a caretaker? You know, are you a pushover? Is it hard for you to say no and set boundaries? You know, that's a big indication right there that we may be dealing with some, with an empath. Uh, and then I go deeper with the narcissist because that that can, uh, you know, that's the dark side of the of the codependent. 
But if the codependent experiences enough abuse, um, it can turn dark for the codependent. Okay. Um, but I'll get into that in, in, a, in a little while as I go through this book, uh, What is an Empath? I thought this was a very uh, interesting topic. This is section one. It says, let's talk about the definition of the word empath. The meaning of empath is a person with the ability to apprehend, take on, and reflect the mental emotion and state of another individual. It also includes the ability to heal. heal. And an empath can also be described as, a per as someone who feels the feelings of others and takes on the emotions and feelings of those around them. A highly sensitive person, you may also have the feeling of knowing and intuition, sensing events before they happen, and a strong and certain gut feeling when something doesn't feel right. Empaths have an extremely reactive neurological system and don't possess the same filters that other people do to block out stimulation. Some call it a blessing and some call it a curse. And so for um, our empath, for us, we're constantly picking up information from everything around us, from everybody's minds to their feelings and their emotions. Uh, they they seem to be bombarding us. Uh, even when we're paying attention to somebody's expression, their facial expression, we're picking up so much information and we don't block it out. Uh, our energy, therefore, it processes the information. You know, either processes the inner information or it reflects the information. Okay, and I'll get back into reflect a little bit later. I got a good story about reflecting, mirroring, and mimicking because it can get into that too. Again, because the empath is called, it is, is uh, behavior pattern is codependent. So it's easy for them to take on other people's emotions and personalities. Okay. So we're going to come back to that in a minute. Okay. And then there's types of empaths. Okay. And, you know, this author goes to, into, uh, to all types of characteristics uh, of the empaths. So there's about, 14, 15 characteristics here. But I'm going to go into the types, the different types of empath. Let's name and discuss the significance of each empath. Uh, there's the emotional empath that pick up on other people's emotions and it can become a sponge for those feelings. Uh, the physical empath are truly in step with other people's emotions and physical state also can absorb them into their body. The intuitive empath can experience extraordinary perceptions such as heightened intuition, messages in dreams, telepathy, animal, plant communication, as well as contact with the other side. Okay, so, you know, I don't know which one that you fall into, uh, but when I see, uh, when I've read few those, I kind of was like, well, you know, I can see myself falling into... All of those. So you might, I might read those and you might like, oh, I fall into all of those. Uh, I remember fit, uh, experiencing a physical empath when I was around four or five. My cousin got really, really sick. I knew she was sick and I began to take on the illness and I begged my mom to call her. I knew she was sick. Uh, the instant my mom picked up the phone, her mother, my cousin's mother, was on the other line saying my cousin was calling out for me and telling her to call me. And both of them were shocked. You know, I haven't had that happen before uh, else. And I did it sometime with my father. I could feel when something, when he needed that extra inspiration or more support, uh, he would always say, you wrote me at the right time. And you said the right thing at the right, right time. So I, I could feel with my father as well. So I've had instances like that with him as well. Uh, and then she talks about the intuitive impasse. We have the earth impasse, are in tune with the changes in the weather, planet, and solar system. Telepathic impasse, receive intuitive information about others in the present time. Dream empaths have vivid dreams and receive information from the dreams that provide guidance to those around them and those that may not know into their own lives. Animal empaths can understand, tune in, and communicate with animals. Plant empaths can feel the needs of plants and connect with them. 
precognitive empaths have precognitive visions of the future, whether dreaming or awake. Now, I want to, you know, emphasize here, as if you're awakening and you are trying to develop spiritually, at some point, all of these um, empathetic gifts, empathic gifts are going to open up, especially if you're uh, practicing uh, with tarot cards, mediumship, divination, it only cr increases and grows that energy. So even if you do fit in one category, I wouldn't be surprised if you start opening up other empathic abilities as you strengthen them. OK, because that certainly was I feel like that is certainly what happened for me. The more I read cards, uh, stay in tune, uh, do my shadow work, work on my ancestor altar. It just my my. Uh, my empathic abilities grow stronger. Okay. It's just a byproduct of that. And then they have the mediumship empaths can access beings on the other side. And so, uh, yeah, those are, those are the different uh, types of empaths. So I thought this was a neat one. I want to go on to the other one. Oh, it talks about empath and uh, uh, in the everyday life. You know, you're empathic. You're going to have to be aware of your energy and the spaces that you're going into. You know, why are you feeling and thinking the way you are at the moment? They may not be your thoughts or emotions. People may think you're antisocial or just shy. But in reality, the real question you're presented with in this, this situation is, how are you supposed to explain this? to someone in these kinds of moments. You can't, you can't, I, I've, I've just stopped trying to explain and just don't go places where I'm not comfortable, okay? That can feel more than what meets the eye. I can feel, I can completely relate and to put a stop to this kind of situation, I simply stopped going to where I felt uncomfortable. I just said that. I became utterly indifferent if it was family or not. If I sense a hint of someone ill intentions or thoughts towards me, manipulation or their insecurities or jealousies are pushed onto me, even indirectly, I stay completely away from the area rather than dealing with the fake persona of being nice just to save face. Protecting mental health and happiness should mean way more than saving face. For anyone out there thinking that you are alone and feeling this way, you are not. There are indeed others like you who are searching for answers as well. I wanted to write this book from a down-to-earth and beginner's point of view, as I know what it's like to experience life as an empath and wonder who or what I could turn to. We can't avoid the public eye. Everyone has to work and go out into the world. At some point, yes, it's taxing. Being around people is general and can be taxing no matter who you are. Before empath is especially so. Uh, I remember I was going, I was in this group meeting and I knew this lady didn't like me. I knew she didn't like, I knew. And I tried my best to avoid her and stay away from her um, and not interact with her. Uh, one day we had this interaction. I don't know if I bumped into her or what happened, but she made a... a she made some type of movement, some type of behavior movement. And before you know it, I had did the same thing like she was in a mirror. And I was like, what? And we both looked at each other. It was so weird. I've never experienced that before. Uh, it just reflected. It was like she was looking in a mirror just for, just for that, that minute or so. I was, I was mirroring her. And it was not that I was doing it intentionally. I was not doing it intentionally. And that night, I mean, we both looked at each other weird. It was very odd. I kept asking myself, why did you do that? Like, why were you doing that? Uh, and it definitely was not intentionally. Uh, I, I mirrored her. So I don't know if if she needed to see that or, you know, I don't know. It was a very empathic moment. It was very odd. So if you've ever experienced that before uh, where you've mirrored someone, uh, and that happens with empaths sometimes. We, uh, I guess it's the energy exchange, the transference of energy. Uh, I mirrored her by accident. It, it, it was it was 
kind of, you know, it was, it was, it was weird. It was odd, freaky. Uh, so if you've ever experienced that, please leave your comments in the in below. You know, tell your story. Uh, relationships can be particularly tricky and impact everyday life, friendships, marriages, co-workers, parenting can be tough. And the most straightforward events, times and times may seem overwhelming emotionally, but you can overcome this. Being in a solid relationship is good and recommended for the empath. You need someone there to share your thoughts with and someone to help you grow in this world as everyone does. But because the empath also is very generous, caring, and sometimes naive because I, you know, I have to catch myself. I can be naive sometimes when I get in, you know, want to have pity and feel sorry for people. Uh, they can fall into very toxic relationships and friendships. We're going to talk about the narcissist, the, imp uh, the empath, because I, you know, I see that all the time, especially with me, when, women and men, that um, they seem to be drawn to each other like magnets. It says the giving and healing nature of an empath can easily be taken advantage of in a world where most people only care about themselves. So when you come across an actual person that is loving and open and lets almost everything slide, people tend to take a bit uh, uh, tend to take it a bit too far. The empath the empath has to learn to guard against being drained and used to the extent where there is no part of you left. Don't give so much of yourself away just because you feel sorry for people. This goes with anyone that may be in your life at work or at home. Establish boundaries. I notice codependent people, they have a hard time saying no. They feel guilty when they say no. Uh, you know, they have no, you know, they have a less sense of self. And they, we really don't find out who we, we are until we get out of these codependent behaviors in relationships. And, and when I'm saying codependence and what I have realized and come to understand uh, working and counseling in this profession, uh, codependence, most codependents are empaths. Yes, I'll get into that uh, in, in a minute. Okay, to protect your emotions, you know, uh, for me, I love this book because it it gave me, confirmed a lot of things that I was doing right to uh, to protect my energies. If you're an empath, you really want to get into trying to balance your energy with stones, okay? Hematite is the best, it's one of the, let me go back. Hematite is one of the best stones and that's the one I wear. And I read this book and I was blown away at what it said about hematite. It says a powerful stone that helps keep the body and spirit grounded. While all crystals have powerful and fantastic grounding effects, the hematite crystal stands out in power to activate, clear the root chakra, which is the energy center that anchors us to the earth and provides feeling of balance and stability. It can absorb toxic emotions that keep us from enjoying life to the fullest and the negative emotions we absorb from others. From others. Hematite is also excellent for healing the body because it cleanses the blood and supports circulation. Another stone, and these stones I always wear on my wrist. I'm not wearing them now because I'm in the uh, shop and I haven't left the house. Uh, but I, I usually always wear, I usually always wear these two stones. The amethyst stone is the mighty crystal with this ability to not only heal, protect, but also to be used as a spiritual energy source. It can really guide an empath. The crystal is one of the crystal is one of the very few stones with this unique, beautiful purple coloration that is a form of quartz that contains iron, other minerals within it. It's a meditative common stone that promotes calm, peace, balance, and balance. Since empaths have the unfortunate pleasure of taking on other people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions, it only makes sense that they would get bogged down with depression, depression, anxiety, and stress. I deal with a lot of anxiety. Uh, because of past abuse, childhood abuse, PTSD, uh, and, and probably, uh, you know, contributing to me being an empath in a uh, toxic family as well. 
uh, you need protection and guidance. The amethyst stone blocks mental stress and negative emotions. Has a beautiful violet color. It magnifies positive vibes all while cleansing the body of negative energy when placed against the skin. It also works as natural stress reliever. It boosts the spirit and encourages spiritual growth by protecting the aura from damaging metaphysical debris and toxic emotions such as anger, anxiety, fear, and more. Love that. I always wear it. I'm always wearing that. Then they talk about the Arca Marine crystals, uh, Arca Aura Quartz, Everton crystals, uh, Azurite. I mean, they just talk about and really pretty pictures in here. Let me show you some pictures. See, that's the tourmaline. Now, I always recommend the tourmaline for my customers, especially when they're dealing with negative people. Um, negative emotions, um, negative thinking. I always recommend black tourmaline. That's, that's that, man. That's, that's the one right there, the, the biggest protector. It contains full fullerness, which are potent antioxidants that have amazing effects such as strong anti-inflammatory antihistamine effects that in turn relieve the body muscle pain, improve the immune system. It is also beneficial stress reliever. The crystal is connected to the root chakra. The root chakra is located at the base of the spine. This stone can purify the mind and negative thoughts and feelings. Of, and feelings. Ancient magicians used the crystal to protect them from evil entities when casting their spells. Today, it is known as the stone of protection and also can be used as a psychic shield, able to deflect negative forces, entities, and emotion. It's a powerful grounded stone connecting you to the earth so i like that stone too there's a lot of other ones in here i like the little pictures in here book and this is the everton crystal here uh let's see an aquamarine crystal so the author goes over a few crystals in this book uh, that really gives you a jump start. But I don't think it's just for empaths. I would say if you're newly awakened, your energy is going to become sensitive. You're going to need these crystals anyway. You're going to become more empathic. So I recommend that you suggest some really good crystals for to maintain your energy. Okay. And it was another good part in here I wanted to go to. Oh, so many cute. I mean, so many. I mean, the pictures in here are just, oh, my God. That's blue everything. And they look like black onyx. Blue agate. Oh, that's blue uh, blue lace agate. Okay, so the pictures I heard are, are just uh yeah. There's lots of pictures in here. Uh my favorite part of this book, I'm getting ready to close, you guys. I'm not gonna keep you long. Uh it was another part in here. Ah, uh, the empath and the narcissist. Uh, this is a very good subject. Very good, very good, very good. Because I am firmly believe that the narcissist, uh, which I believe that are borderline um uh, borderline, what would I like to say? <laughs> I don't want to say, but I, I would say I, I say borderline psychotics. Borderline psychotics. Uh, and uh, I think there's karmic lessons there for each each one to learn from each other. Uh, if you're caught up in a relationship with the narcissist, uh, it would change your life because when, after you walk away from the narcissist, we learn so much about self-love, and that's all the narcissist does is love themselves. You, you see, you see the correlation there. You get what I'm saying there. And so it teaches so much about ourselves, and, and and the narcissists get a chance to look at uh, themselves at, at when we walk away, if they decide to bring in that awareness, you know. But most likely, a lot of them don't do a lot of changing, you know, not that I'm aware of, you know. And I have a mom who's, you know, she she's a prime example. You know, um, she has some issues going on with her. So uh, the empath and the narcissist. 
Relationships and love can be especially tricky for an empath. We want to be with someone, but for us, it's tad tricky because we feel things on more profound spiritual level. We see through lies, even though we may tear our own. We had our emotions while calling out other people to share theirs. We want everyone to tell us their problems while we bury our own. An empath can perhaps come off as too much, too caring, while at the same time needing space due to the number of emotions and feelings they experience. Mm. The contrast can conflict and confuse the person in a relationship with the empath and can pose problems down the line if not addressed and discussed openly, honestly, and without judgment on either side. Being honest with your mate about the things you experience can prove beneficial for them also for you as an empath. Knowing yourself again is very important. If you know yourself, you can then share with your mate who you are, what you experience, and your deepest feelings. You will know your boundaries and what you will and won't be able to handle. The definition of a narcissist is a self-absorbed person with an excessive interest and admiration for themselves. Narcissists have a long-term pattern of self-absorbed behavior, the need for constant admiration, and have an extreme lack of empathy for others, while also thinking they know what's best for everyone. Now, since the empath had our natural healers and care so deeply for others, it only makes sense that these two people are exact opposites. Narcissists care for themselves more than anything, and the empaths feel and care about people more than themselves. So when this sort of couple comes together, it can be the beginning of many problems. Narcissism also includes the ability to manipulate someone to get what you want, as well as never taking responsibility for one's own actions. Narcissists tend to believe that they are without sin and that everything that happens is someone else's fault. It is very hard to be in a relationship with self-absorbed victim-blaming individuals, but it surely happens. It's emotionally and psychologically dangerous for an empath to be involved with a serious relationship or marriage with a narcissist because most empaths are naive about their power and do not feel, fully understand what they are, they are experiencing and are fully capable of. They come off as someone who may be shy or extremely lies and you can tell them anything. They may be someone easily influenced. They sense and feel emotions and feelings toward everyone they meet. So they wind up giving too much of that love. And that certainly was me. Oh my gosh, that was that that was me. I've been working on that. That benefit of the doubt and healing to the wrong person. To a narcissist, they're their direct opposite. Narcissists thrive on being doted on. They love attention, rarely care to give any back. They love and crave a validation, almost any sort. They need to be the smartest in the room. They feel they need to be the most different person in the room so they can stand out, even if it's not with a lot of actions. All narcissists aren't very talkative. Some aren't your typical model, shallow type of narcissist. Some are just self-indulgent. It's all about them and their feelings and what they want. They are master manipulators. So if a narcissist loves attention being taken care of and constant validation, what exactly does an empath do when the relationship is like this? They do exactly that. That's what we do. We give them, we just give them everything we got. Okay? They give attention, provide constant reassurance and validation, take care of the narcissist, see people, only do what you allow them to do. And empaths, which are, you know, let's use another word, the, um, the behavior term, which you'll see today is codependence. A yes person, don't know how to say yes, don't know how to keep boundaries, don't know how to assert themselves. Okay, see, people only do what you allow them to do. Empaths allow a great deal. We can carry a great deal of emotions for others. We easily place ourselves in their shoes and can relate to how we'd feel if someone did something nice for us. So we overcompensate with the belief and we love hard. An empath is a perfect person for a narcissist in theory because the empath never stops healing, never stops being who they are at heart, therefore making it easier for the self-absorbed person to just sit back and let the empath keep stroking and building their ego. Emotional abuse can occur in any relationship 
relationship, but studies have proven that being in a relationship with a narcissist doubles the chances. I mean, you will come up with all types of diseases and health illnesses. I have seen this with my own eyes. I have a, I've seen this and experienced this. Being in a toxic relationship, it will do damage to your body, spirit, and mind. It's like cancer or you know, it just oozes in there. It's like cancer. It's, it's just like cancer, okay? Uh, empaths and people all over the world are waking up and realizing their worth, and you must do the same. Don't let your empathic nature cloud your judgment and allow things you would not have normally normally tolerated. The best way to deal with a textbook narcissist is to not deal with them. There is no nice way to tell someone they're selfish, no matter how many words you use or ways you try and word it. If at the end of every day all they still care about is themselves, remove yourself from the situation. Many assume that you have to be in full-blown physically abusive relationships to be unhappy and that is far from the truth. I think the, you know, to me it's the mental and emotional abuse is the worst with that. There is such a thing as mental torment, mind games, with very little action or effort to make the nice words a reality. That is all mentally and even physically exhausting. You have every right to move on to someone who doesn't have to play games with your mind and belittle you anytime you finally defend yourself and speak the truth. It doesn't have to escalate to the point of physical abuse for you to be unhappy. You have every right to want the life you envision for yourself. You have the right to embrace things you love and uninterrupted by negative words from the narcissists who only want you to stay around to take care of them, not so they can love you, not so they can take care of you. Empaths are generally caring people, and some people take that for granted, narcissists especially. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that every person that has selfish manip manipulative tendency is a narcissist that is fully aware of what they're doing when they hurt someone. That is not true. Some people just need to see the light and error of their ways. They might not even be aware that they are this type of person. But make no mistake, though someone may be unaware of their toxic nature, it doesn't make it any less hard, harder to cope with. Okay, so uh, you, like I said, this is a really good book. I hope you enjoyed. It's still more uh, stuff in here. I mean, I got this whole thing marked up. Uh, it's still more helpful, insightful information uh, in this melanin and empath book. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the book review. I hope it gave uh, gave you some insight and some knowledge into the uh, the empath. Thanks for being here today, loved ones. Light, love, namaste. I say, loved ones.